All right, all right, all right. It's time once again, folks, for my instant movie reaction to the creator. That's right, it is my out of theater reaction. I just got out of the theater for a screening, ooh, a screening, if you will, of the creator from director Gareth Edwards and starring John David Washington, Gemma Chan, Allison Janney, Ken Watanabe, and introducing Madeline Yuna Voiles as Alfie, the chosen one, the chosen child. This is a film that theoretically was supposed, was initially pitched as a Star Wars film and thankfully Kathleen Kennedy and all the people at Star Wars rejected this film and it, it ends up still at Fox. It's a 20th Century Studios production, so it is still Disney. But it's basically a giant Vietnam War allegory. Oh, and by the way, there are tons of spoilers in this film. It is so good, though. Uh, this film is a giant Vietnam War allegory, but it's set 40 years, 40, 45 years in the future, even though it's basically channeling the Vietnam War epic films of the 70s and 80s. So it's it's channeling a war that happened 60 years ago at this point, but it's set 40, 45 years in the future. In the future, the year 2065, which is weird to think that that's only 40 to 45 years away from 2023. You know the phrase, go big or go home? I don't know why I'm doing this. It looks kind of weird on camera, but the phrase, go big or go home, really does apply to this film. It's it's weird that it's not coming out in summertime. It's weird that it's not coming out in December, in December at Christmas time, because this is the type of film that should be number one at the box office for months and months and months. And the fact that it's being released at the end of September is really a bit bizarre. I am HO in my honest opinion. But okay, let's get let's get into the plot of this film. Uh, the idea is humanity and artificial intelligence, robots, androids, simulants, if you will. They're having a war between America and the rest of the world. And for whatever reason, Thailand gets renamed into New Asia. Yeah, it seems a bit racist and seems a bit on the nose for being a Vietnam War allegory of a film, but you know, it is what it is. That aside, it is really interesting because it does approach the whole subject matter of what does it mean to be human in not a heavy-handed way. I think a lot of the movies of the 70s and 80s, they took the, the subject matter of what does it mean? You know, what does it mean to be human? They took that concept and kind of ran it into the ground for a good many, many years. I'd say 20, 30 years at least. So we haven't seen a film built like this film in quite some time. Gareth Edwards is amazing as a director. He did Godzilla 2014, which is by far the best Godzilla film of all of the last 20 years by far. And he did Rogue One, which had a really troubled production history. And the fact that it is by far the best Star Wars film that Disney has done, bar none, especially all the sequel trilogy. Gareth Edwards, this is the best film in his career. John David Washington, you know, he was in Tenet, which was directed by Christopher Nolan, which is a good film. I like that film. This film, The Creator, runs around Tenet in circles. This is so much better. Not that Tenet is bad, but The Creator is John David Washington's best film by far. Gemma Chan as the as the love interest. We're going to go into spoilers a bit here, but Gemma Chan is, as John David Washington's love interest, as his wife. She's not in the film very much, but her presence is felt throughout the entire film. Madeline Univoyles as Alfie. She's basically the, the chosen one, the Christ-like type figure, the one that's going to save or end humanity, one or the other. Plays the little girl. She plays a little girl robot who looks human, they're called simulants for some reason. It feels, it feels a lot like Blade Runner 2049, but without being so heavy handed or being a little bit too in touch with, with its emotional side, this film is much, much more epic. And Madeline Univoyles as Alfie does a great job sort of embodying the innocence of childhood, but also the hope for mankind and also the good side of humanity and what people can become and not being jaded and oh, here we go again type of thing. Madeline Univoyles does a great job but she does she's playing a human character even though she's not human. She's a creation of mankind but she's not uh, technically human 
in the biological sense. She's She's got the humanity of being human, but she's not biological. She's artificial. She's man-made. Ken Watanabe. I love Ken Watanabe in everything he does. You know, for being a film set in Asia with a Japanese actor, for being most famous for saying, Godzilla. Ken Watanabe in this film, you know, his character's not really in it all that much, but you feel his presence throughout the film. He plays a simulant, he plays a father figure, but you really don't see him all that much. He's a freedom fighter, he is a terrorist, depending on your definition of the issue. But Ken Watanabe does a great job in this film in a, admittedly a small role, and I, I wish he was on screen more but consider the type of character that he played in Inception. There's a lot of mystery there. You don't really know a ton about his character. It's more his presence on screen that you feel throughout the film. Even though he doesn't necessarily have that many lines and he's not really on camera that much. And honestly, I, I can't remember his character's name. I'm sure if I look it up, I could name it, but uh, putting it on the screen right now in a text form. But Ken Watanabe is amazing in this film, in a small role, but you really feel his presence throughout the entire film. Allison Janney, my god, I know she got nominated a few years ago for Lady Bird, and deservedly so, but I've never seen Allison Janney in a role quite like this. This is as different a role of hers as I've ever seen her do. And she was an actress that was on the West Wing, she's an actress that was in on the show the, the sitcom Moms, which was good-ish, but I've never seen Allison Janney as a military type figure before. She always plays the intellectual. She always plays the funny. This is a badass kick butts and take names. This is a kick-ass character. It will kick your butt and take your name. Not quite in that order. Allison Janney, she's basically the quasi villain of the film and you see exactly where she's coming from. She has an origin story scene and yeah, okay, so she's a talented actress and she can, she can cry on demand. We all know that. Without taking up a ton of screen time, you understand exactly what her, where her character is coming from and why she's doing what she's doing. Man, she, she does a great job though making you believe in her reasoning and her cause is a righteous cause. It is motivated by real emotion. She's not out there to be evil for the sake of being evil, but she is the villain of this story. She's basically sort of like the Miles Quidditch character from Avatar. Isn't an exact one for one apples for apples comparison, but that's probably the closest thing. She's the military figure. She's the, the villain of the film, the antagonist for sure. But she does such a great job making you forget that that's that she is Allison Janney. She is everything that you don't think that Allison Janney would be and that she would play, which is exactly why Allison Janney is the perfect actress to play this role. Man, John David Washington as the lead character as Taylor. I know we've seen characters like this before, sort of the jaded mil ex-military type character, the ex-military type guy that that gets that's out and he gets pulled back in and you know that part of it we've seen before but the way he emotes this character and his motivations for his character to try and find his wife and getting sidetracked along this journey and and where that takes him and his motivations along that journey it's heartbreaking and it's human and and honestly too it's weird because for the first time in his career it might not be technically the first time in his career that he's done it, and I don't know if he has or if he hasn't, but I believe it's the first time in his career that he's really channeled his dad, Denzel Washington, in a film. He doesn't really look like Denzel. He doesn't really sound like Denzel 99% of the time, but there are times in this film where he's, he's running and he's doing an action scene, he's doing a fight scene. He channels Denzel Washington, and you would swear that Jay Farrow from Saturday Night Live is doing his Denzel Washington impersonation because it is that dead on John David Washington impersonating, channeling his father for, you know, small parts of this film and not even full scenes, but just moments. You can hear Denzel Washington's voice coming out of the mouth of John David Washington and it's freaking awesome. Really kind of a surreal thing in a very surreal type film. Uh, the directing of Gareth Edwards is amazing. The, the musical score by Hans Zimmer is amazing. The whole theme of more human than human, of you know artificial life, what is it that makes people human? What is it? What is it to be human? 
that whole thing is it's on the border of being too heavy handed, of being too taking itself too seriously, and it does not cross that line. Like it's it's one of those things where if it took one more step to cross that line into melodrama, we'd be making fun of the creator until the end of time as film fans. But thankfully, they dial it back just enough to where it does not cross the line into going into melodrama, into being heavy handed, and it does a really honest job of asking all of those questions amongst a big epic setting. Yes, they're they're dealing with some sci-fi elements that we've seen many times before. Yes, the space station thing looks a lot like the one we saw in Elysium and the one we saw in Interstellar, which in and of itself is not necessarily an original idea, but the way they realize it in this film is great. And honestly, too, the way that artificial intelligence, the way that artificial life is presented in this film is really unique because there's different layers to it. There are robot robots, there are robots that kind of sort of look human, and then there are robots that that are basically almost indistinguishable from human in their emotions, except for the fact that you can see through the side of their head, but their face looks completely human because the face is human and they just CGI'd out the rest of their head and, and body. I love this film. Uh, it is absolutely worth watching in theaters. I watched it in IMAX. I saw it at an IMAX screening and it's worth the extra couple bucks for IMAX. And anybody who watches my channel knows how much I hate, 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 and dare I say, loathe CGI computer generated imagery but the CGI in this film it's not flawless but it's pretty dang close everything from the CGI set extensions to the character replacement where they take the human's face and replace the rest of their body and head with CGI robot parts um, everything about it is pretty much seamless there are a few scenes where it gets a little you know the uncanny valley pops in a little bit but for the most part it's seamless the CGI in this film is as good as I've ever seen in a film, including Avatar, which is saying something. The Navi and Avatar are not supposed to be photorealistic at all, but in this film, they are supposed to be photorealistic. And I, I challenge anyone who doesn't like CGI, I challenge anyone to find more than two or three shots in this entire film that are you know, questionable CGI. And yeah, CGI looks better on the big screen, but even when this movie goes to home video and goes to cable and goes to Blu-ray and 4K, this is one that I believe, having just came out of the screening, that the CGI will stand the test of time. Even four or five years from now, CGI does not age well at all. But in this case, I believe that the filmmaking is so good that the CGI, and if you really look at the, the, the CGI in Inception from 10, 12 years ago, that still stands the test of time. I mean, if you really look hard enough, you can see, you know, you can see the cracks in the facade, but it really is solid work top to bottom. It really does make you get lost and immersed into this world that's set in 2065, but that's only 40 years in the future. You know, if you think 40 years ago, that was like 1980. So. We're actually closer to the future that is the setting of the creator than the inspiration, which is the Vietnam War, which happened in the 60s and early 70s. So go figure. But this is a great film. I highly recommend the creator. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. I would give it four and a half stars out of five. On the screen now is my finished score for this film, but this is a solid film all the way around. The visuals, the acting, the casting, the directing especially, and the musical score by Hans Zimmer is amazing. The cinematography, my God, I didn't even talk about the cinematography. The cinematography in this film is epic and sweeping and absolutely worth watching. Go see the creator. You guys let me know down in the comments section down below, what did you guys think of the creator? If you've already seen it, what did you think of the film? And if, you're, if you haven't seen it yet, are you planning to go watch the creator in theaters? And are you planning to spend the extra couple of dollars of the cheddar cheese? The cheddar cheddar cheese, y'all. Are you planning to spend the extra couple of dollars on the IMAX? I think it's absolutely worth the extra couple of bucks. It's worth watching in theaters and worth the extra couple of bucks for IMAX. Uh, but tell me, are you planning on watching the creator in IMAX in theaters. Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm getting ever closer to the mythical, magical 1,000 subscriber mark, so every single subscriber helps. Every single like and comment helps. Share. We should always share. Please share this video if you liked it. Like my channel.
please, like me, like me, P for the sake of all things holy and all things YouTube, please like me. <laughs> I've been Dragon Movie Guy, and I will see you next time. See ya.